Hey there folks, George Jackson here. I'm going to be looking today at breaking down this little tune, Squirrel Hunter. This one was featured on Tyler Childers' album, A Long Violent History. If you've been wanting to dive into learning some old time fiddle music like Tyler has this last year, uh, well, I'm here to help you sort of start on that journey and we're just going to break down the melody here uh, nice and slowly. I'm going to try and show you some tricks about where to put your fingers, how to use your bow, be playing Squirrel Hunter in no time. A little bit of history about this tune. As far as I can tell, it's originally from Pennsylvania, uh, Western Pennsylvania. There's a couple of um, versions of it in West Virginia as well. The tune really got popular when the great musician John Hartford recorded this one on his album Wild Hog in the Red Brush. You want to check that version out for sure. I'm pretty sure that's where Tyler would have referenced his version from. So I have a go at playing the tune a few times for you and then we'll break it down. Okay, this tune here is in the key of A, and uh, we have our open string here, A, which is the second string from the highest, third string from the lowest there. So if we go from low to high, we have a G string, we have a D string, we have A string, and then we have E string. So this tune is based around the key of A, so we're mostly going to be sticking to the A string and the E string the two highest strings. But we do often also hit this chord with the open D string and the open A string together as well. Now it's not an A major. We have one note that's slightly different from our E major um, scale. And so this kind of puts it into a little bit of a modal context. Um, the one note that we're going to change from E major is we're going to take our second finger on the E string, which is normally a G sharp in the key of E major, and we're going to bring that down so that it's close to our first finger. That's going to be the note G. So you don't really need to know what the names of the notes are necessarily, but um, all that you need to know is that on the A string, we're going to have sort of like a space, then our first finger, a space, then our second finger. Our third finger is going to be close, close into that second finger there. On the E string, we're going to have a space, then our first finger, Second finger nice and close in here, and third finger after a space there. So slightly different um, patterns there. Space, space, close, and then space, close, space. We are gonna sort of head over to the D string at 1.2, and that's gonna be the same as our A string, the same pattern there. We've got space, space, close. That third finger on the D string, that's the note G as well, G natural. So when Normally in A major we would have a G sharp, but we're keeping this at G natural. So those are our patterns on the instrument, where your fingers go. Okay, let, let's play a scale. Often it's good to just play the scale of, that the tune is in to really sort of tune in our fingers so we know where we're putting them down. We're just going to use the first three fingers here. We're not going to worry about the fourth finger so much. Here we go. So open A, first finger down after a little bit of a space. It's going to sound like this. Second finger down with a space. Third finger down close. Open E string. 
First finger down after a space. Second finger down close to the e, close to the first string. Uh, second finger down close to the first finger. And third finger down after a space. And that's our scale. Back down. Okay, there are two parts in this tune. We have the A part and the B part. And each part is repeated two times. So what we end up with is four phrases, one phrase and then repeated again, and then the B part is another whole phrase and then that's repeated again. So let's break down our A section, which goes like this. I'm gonna play the whole A section through and nice and slowly and just stop after that. So here we go. our whole A part and then it's repeated again so let's repeat that is to just break down uh, our 1A section into small, four smaller chunks. So our first chunk, I'm going to call this the first phrase here, goes like this. Alright, we're starting on the open E and we've got our third finger on the A string ready. We're just using third finger and first finger on the A string. That's our first phrase. Second phrase. Okay, that's a little bit, there's a little bit more information there. We're starting on the A string, first finger down. And we're gonna head over to the third finger on the D string after hitting the open A string. Now, those are the notes that come in before the uh, the beat there, one open, down beat. So we've got, sort of following our scale up, three, open, one, two, three. So we have three, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that whole second phrase, Come in after three. One, two, three. Okay, our third phrase is the same as the first phrase. All right, easy. We got that from last time. Got that one for free. Okay, and then our last phrase starts out like the second phrase did, but then slightly changes for the ending. So we're starting off with the same uh, two upbeats there, one open, before we hit the downbeat, strong beat there, third finger on the D string. That's all the same, three, open, one, two, three. And this is where it slightly changes, just open, one, three, open. And at the end there, we can either go on both the D and the A string together, or just the open A string if you like, or just the open D string. Uh, whatever is, is more comfortable. Um, I think ideally you'd get both those strings in there. Okay, let's go over those four broken down sections. First phrase. Okay, 
Okay, second phrase. Third phrase, same as the first. And then ending, which starts out the same as the second. There's two big long notes on those open strings at the end. All right, you've got the whole A part. Let's play the whole A part together. We'll put those four phrases together. Then you've got the whole A part, and then we're going to repeat that whole group of four phrases again. Here we go. One, two, here we go. You got the A part. Now we're just going to move on to the B part here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to deconstruct it, break it up into some little phrases, put it back together, and then put the whole tune together. The good thing is uh, we're going to be able to take over some of that information from the A part and use it in the B part as well. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in and I hope you're enjoying this lesson. Playing and teaching music is how I make my living. So if you're getting something out of this lesson and you want to help me out, there are a couple of ways to do that that cost no money at all. Click subscribe on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash George Jackson Music. Follow me on Instagram or on Facebook or sign up to my mailing list, which is at my website, georgejacksonmusic.com. If you are able to support me to continue creating lessons and music financially, you can check out my CDs, which are available at my website or my Bandcamp page, or you can sign up to my Patreon page. Starting at just $5 a month, uh, you can support me at all sorts of different levels there. And I upload new lessons there every week uh, for just $20. Plus, you'll get immediate access to over 45 lessons, the, the full backlog that I've recorded so far and all of the lessons going forward. So there's a ton of stuff there for you. Uh, thanks so much for your support and let's get back to this lesson. Okay, let's have a listen to the B part. I'll play the whole thing through. One, two, B part. Okay, from what I can tell, <laughs> we're, we have a new first phrase. That's new. Our second phrase is the same as the second phrase in the A section. Alright, easy, you've got that much. New first phrase again. Exactly the same ending from the A part. Okay, so all we have really have to do to finish off this whole tune is learn one more phrase. So that's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. So here's how the new phrase goes. Starting on the open E string. Now remember we've got our second finger which has moved on the E string. It's moving back close to our first finger. The note G natural. Open, two, three. 
and then three two. So taking, putting it on, and then taking it off. Open E, third on the A string. Open E, one two. So that's our. Those are uh, the notes for our new phrase. Yeah. All right. Second phrase, we know it already. Starts with that one open to the third finger on the D string. Back to the new phrase here, open E. Same ending as, as in the A part. Put the B section together now. One, two, here we go. Okay, now we've got all of the notes there for the whole tune. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to play the tune through slowly so you can play along, both A part and then the B part as well. So we've got A part, A part, B part, B part. And then after that, I'm just going to quickly give you a few tips on how to use the bow uh, in this sort of context. And um, I'm going to be deconstructing a bunch more of these tunes from Tyler Childers album, uh, these traditional old time fiddle tunes. Um, I hope that you'll join me on Patreon to, to dive into these tunes a little further. And um, Right, here we go. Play this one along with me. Squirrel Hunters. One, two, here we go. Okay, using the bow, what do we do with this thing? Well, most of the time we can be playing each note with an individual bow stroke. And that's gonna sound something like this. So with each change of the note, we're gonna take a new bow direction. That's called saw strokes. 
So saw bowing, we're just kind of like using our bow like it's a saw, we're sawing through the fiddle um, and playing each note individually. That gets a little bit monotonous after a while, so what we want to start doing is including more than one note on one direction. A good way to start doing this in old time fiddle music is to get a shuffle bow going. So a shuffle bow is like a bowing pattern that just kind of like underpins the whole tune. We can get a rhythm going in our bow that, that just keeps the dancers wanting to dance and keeps all the musicians wanting to play in a good rhythm and we put the melody on top. So one of the most common of these bow shuffles, just called the basic shuffle, is gonna be a long, short, short, long, short, short. So we're gonna end up having sort of like two notes and then two saw strokes. So two notes in one bow and then two saw strokes. Let's just try the, um, the, pa the pattern here by ourselves. So we've got long, short, short, long. I start playing squirrel hunters with that rhythm we can do it right from the beginning it's going to sound something like this sort of modify it at the end there. Ideally what you want to do is find a middle ground between doing saw strokes and including some parts with shuffle bow. So what's going to happen as you get as you speed up the tune uh, it's not going to feel great to just be doing every single note individually. So you're going to want to start trying to introduce some slurs and some shuffle bowing. This is how it kind of naturally comes to me. Um, I'm going to start out with some um, some separate bows, some saw strokes, and then I'm going to sort of introduce the shuffle bow. Separate, shuffle. And at the end there, just nice long bows. So there's no right or wrong way exactly to, to use the bow for this tune. I would say that find the combination of saw strokes and slurs or shuffle bow that makes it really groove for you and feel comfortable. And um, practice playing the tune with only saw strokes, practice playing the tune with only shuffle bow if you can. That gets a little tricky, but you'll get it. Do what's comfortable and I hope you enjoy it.